Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za Welcome everybody to the second show of Rada Inspire on Brand Live. Um, so we had so much fun in studio last week with Ashlyn Gray. We've decided to bring her on board as a co-host. Welcome Ashlyn. Hello everybody. It's so great to be back this time interviewing with Miss Genevieve. How are you doing this morning? I'm fantastic. It's a bright sunny day. Cool. So it's August. Do you know what that means? Women's Month! Yes, Hashtag you are right. Women are everything. <laughs> awesome. So, Rada Inspire decided to obviously jump on board with the Women's Month and support Women's Month um, to create a, additional awareness in attempt to protect and honor the women of this country and the world. So, today in studio, we have um, once again the founder of Rada, JP Nobrega as well as Bernard J, who's the producer of the hit show, The Color Purple, running at the, jo the Mandela, the Joburg Theatre at the moment until the 7th of September. So Ash, do you know what uh, Women's Month, why we celebrate Women's Month? Um, I think it all started when it was in commemoration of the 20,000 women that marched to the union buildings yes, yes, many, yes. many years ago. And I think it's also become more and more important in our society today just because of um, the equality issues that we're facing at the moment within the world that have gotten better but not to a stage where um, we can just let it be. This is the time where we really have to fight as women for each other and also get everyone on board to... Um, get those kind of equal rights. Mm. No, I, I, I completely agree because um, back then in 1956, um, the petition, sorry, was, uh, did they walk in 1994 or 1956? Well, it was celebrated. Celebra okay, yes. So that's, that's when they petitioned against the past laws. And I think it stretched to so much more than just the past laws. You know, there's so many other rights that women should have. Or I actually might have, but aren't really granted. Because, I mean, there's so many countries that really don't see women um, as equal. And I think yeah. that's the biggest issue is just getting those basic rights to being leveled. Okay. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. So is there anything that Women's Day specifically means to you as a woman? Well, look, I've got three sisters and they're younger than me. And um, I've got the most fantastic mother and other woman figures in my life. You being one of them, actually. And I think the biggest thing is to really create, is to um, encourage each other and look after those relationships. Because at the end of the day, if you're not fighting for the people around you, then how are you going to you know, make any other changes in the world today? And we all want to make this place a better a bit of um, mm. A better situation and um, it's it's really special I think to celebrate it with those people especially the women around you. Mm. Sure you almost brought me to tears there um, mm. and I think it's so lovely because this is also what RADA is all about. RADA was formed for women, um, it's for everyone you know but the what, what started RADA was uh, a, a rape campaign which was held on on radio so that you know let's I think let's maybe introduce JP and he can share some more about that yes JP welcome back onto the show Special it's lovely to have you again so much for having me are you having a good day always always even when it's bad it's always good <laughs> I like your attitude so can you remind us again how Rada came about we spoke a bit about the rape com um, campaign that happened uh, sure there was a rape campaign in Feb 2013 um, I was listening to music on the way to work and there was a beep while the music was playing there was a beep every couple of, of seconds from what I remember um, I switched the radio on and off I thought there was something wrong and then uh, I realized when people started to phone in what it what it related to um, yeah it was uh, terrible I suppose not, well not I suppose it was it was hectic um, such a phoned, shock yeah sure a lot of women phoned in and they, they shared their experiences and uh, I actually got quite emotional about it. I switched the radio off. I couldn't actually, I couldn't handle the, 
the emotion, um, especially linking it to my my family. I've got two daughters, two young daughters. Um, the majority of my family cousins and that are, are female, so I basically tried to forget about it for a long time. It didn't really work. It became highly emotional. Um, then I basically decided to do something about it. I spoke to my managing director, Jacqueline Gilbert, and then sold in everything of value and started Rider. That's fantastic. It really shows what kind of person you are. The fact that you're able to take such strong emotions that you're feeling, um, especially for your loved ones like your daughters and your wife, um, and putting it into something so great, which is Rada. And you've made so many um, changes that I think have affected South Africa in many great ways. And as a father of your two daughters, what's the biggest challenge in teaching your girls about what's right and wrong and making them aware of the world around them, especially being in South Africa? Uh, the challenge with kids, um, or specifically my daughters, they um, you don't want to create them aware of something by putting fear in them. Mm. So I don't want my family to live in fear. Um, so you've got to find a, a very careful balance that way. Um, I, I, I definitely encourage youngsters to be aware of their surroundings, mm. but you've got to do it in such a way that it's more empowering than fear-based. Um, and with my daughter specifically, they sometimes I don't know if they're listening to me. You know, <laughs> yes, whatever, Dad. And so I've got to make sure that they get the message in a nice way, um, but it sticks with them, so that you know, if ever they are in that situation, they know m automatically what to do. Yeah, so safety it's, it's, it's is everything. Difficult. It's not an easy thing, but um, I do encourage parents to make their their children aware, and just keep reinforcing it all the time. Definitely. And I think actually it would be a great thing to maybe start is um, getting schools on board with this kind of thing is teaching kids about the dangers that are out there and rather just giving them um, in a situation and giving them little tactics and strategies to get out or to protect themselves um, and have the people around them that they can really trust and um, talk to when it comes to these kind of situations. Yeah, sure. yeah. And it obviously seems like you're doing a great job with being well, there I'm not for sure. them. I, I hope so. Look, it's, you know, there's a lot of a lot of issues out there and Rod is trying, it's trying to make its mark. Yeah, Rada is such a fantastic cause and organization. And I've actually been a part of Rada for about two years now on the music side. Music has played such a big part of Rada and their journey. And there's been a number of female artists that have taken part in the Rada Inspire album. And that is all about trying to overcome your own demons and really inspire the people around you to keep doing great things that help change the world to be a better place. And one of those wonderful people is Tima Reese. She went public a number of years ago about her child abuse and she's really been an inspiration to someone who has made a success of herself and taught others about forgiveness and finding peace. So let's play the song, That's What Friends Are For by Tima Reese. Never thought I'd feel this way And as far as I'm concerned I'm glad I got the chance to say That I do believe I love you And if I should ever go
From 27 boxes in the heart of Melville, this is brandlive.co.za. There you have it, folks. That's Tima Reese. That's what friends are for. So that song was recorded at the Hit Lab for the Rada Inspire album. It is a cover. Uh, what I really, really love about that song and the fact that it's being linked to Women's Month is, you know, you were talking earlier, Ashlyn, about the woman around you and just building each other up and encouraging each other and you know the songs like that's what friends are for but that's you know your your women friends that's that's what they're for and they're there to listen to you and comfort you and nurture you and we all you know as women we such um natural nurturers yes it's all about love indeed it is cool so um at the beginning of this year, uh, we had the Color Purple run for the f- for its first season at the Joburg Theatre, and it had such great success that the uh, organisers decided to do a second run uh, for Women's Month. And yeah, so that's that's currently running at um, the Joburg Theatre. So Rada, Rada in, in the initial run, uh, partnered with the Color Purple just because there were so many similarities between the, the message that's, that's being, uh, you know, sent through, through the Color Purple in terms of empowerment and, and women abuse and uh, gender issues and all that kind of stuff. So we, we've, we've teamed up and we've got Bernard J in studio here to chat to us a little bit more about the Color Purple and their great success. How's it going, Bernard? Hello, I'm in the minority. It's a female-dominated studio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so we're clearly celebrating. <laughs> it, it's just for today, but we we no, we, we, we we still love we still love men. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it is what makes the world go round, men and women. <laughs> <laughs> we both play our parts. Anyway, congratulations on all the rave reviews and Thank the new you. run that's that's happening at the moment. It was fantastic. I actually got the chance to watch it, and my goodness, it brought me to tears. It made me so emotional. And when I say emotional, every single emotion possible is what I felt during watching the yeah, show. Yeah, exactly, because it it's not just tears, you know, of sadness. It's tears mm. of joy, tears of anger, frustration, all that and kind so of many stuff. T- the cast is so talented wow we actually got to meet a few of the the cast members and what fantastic people they are i think i think the musical actually allows you to see why that book has been so celebrated over the years and why it won a pulitzer prize originally it is a brilliant book and so most of what you're hearing on stage the lines are taken directly from the book because there's just no point in changing them and then put it together with janice honeyman's great talent skill for telling a story mm. and, and, and bringing it out with the actors yes it's it's a lovely experience isn't mm, it absolutely. i'm enjoying watching it very much i'm sure you've you've seen it many many times and you've yes. gone really deep into the the, the storyline and how deeply it actually affects so many people out there i get touched by something different every time i see it mm. certainly i'm never quite certain at what point the tears are going to start. Mm. Ah. <laughs> so maybe, you know, for those that aren't that familiar with, with the story, can you maybe tell us a little bit of brief synopsis of what, about the color purple? Gee. <laughs> 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 Look, it's about a, a, a woman in the southern United States in the early 20th century, uh, a woman who is born into a society that in, in which she has no place as a human being. Um, women had no place at that time in that geographical part of the world. And I think that where Alice Walker takes us in the book and where the musical takes us is her discovery through other women that she meets um, during a, a, a 35-year process, a time lapse in the show. She discovers through them that she can have a voice for herself. And in the end, she finds her identity through women. So it, it's, a, it's a great story of empowerment, mm-hmm. of female empowerment. I think that's the biggest thing, is finding your voice uh, for I- actually anyone. Nowadays, we kind of feel like we can't have an opinion because of how hectic this world has become. And 
I think everybody walks away thinking, you know what, I can say what's on my mind. I can speak up for myself when things aren't going maybe correctly. And um, I can stand up to, to the bullies out there and to the people who say I can't do something just because I am who I am. I think, you know, I, I feel that we're, everybody is experience, experiencing this now. The leadership of this world, you know, um, w w I'm not going to mention names, but we can talk about a recent, well, a now former president of a, of a country we're quite close to, and we can talk about a president <laughs> of them, what is called the most powerful nation in the world. And those kind of people are making us all feel mm. very small and feel voiceless and feel that we don't, Whatever we want to say is not being represented. So that way, perhaps, a man such as myself can have a better understanding now in 2018 mm. of what women have been through for so long. Mm. Yeah, it definitely takes yeah. you through the whole process of where we've come over yeah. all the years that yeah. we've been on this earth. And what, what I love about this conversation as well is that the, the sense of togetherness and community that keeps on coming up, you know, she, you mentioned in The Color Purple as well, you know, she 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 meets other women and she sees, you know, what their story is like and she finds her own, own identity as well. So And it's often not, she didn't have a mother figure. No. Yeah, yeah. And, and often we, I think we forget that so many people don't have that mother figure and that's why you have to be there for a stranger, a friend, a cousin, um, at the end of the day, it's the people that you surround yourself yeah, with. And yeah. you don't always have the main one that everybody goes to, which is the mother. She yeah. has her sister. Mm. And yes. we discover that at the beginning of a story. The love between Celie and Nettie, the two sisters. And then, of course, Nettie disappears for the rest of the story until right at the very end. Mm. And the reunion between the two sisters, that says it all about about that relationship. It's, it could be mother-daughter, it could be cousins, what you're saying, in this case it's two sisters. Mm -hmm. But there always was a woman there in her life that she held on to the belief of that other woman. And that's what makes it so beautiful, that community. Mm. Exactly. Okay, so Bernard, why the decision to, to host the second run yeah, in Johannesburg of the show? To be very honest, you know, I'm a theatre producer and a theatre producer looks at the ticket sales. <laughs> so, um, Women's Month was a delightful coincidence. It was such a beautiful coincidence that other people I needed to make up their minds about this did it very quickly when that came up. <laughs> but for, for me, you know, the fourth week of our previous run, we did four weeks, I was selling out totally. Uh, you couldn't get a ticket. People were fighting for tickets, which is just so rare nowadays and mm. so wonderful to have that kind of a success. But immediately my mind as a producer says, we should do this again. I talked to my partners, Joe Berg Theatre, um, with this in mind toward, right towards the end of the first run. And they kind of said, well, maybe, do you think it can work again? And I said, let's look at your calendar, because it really depends. Is the stage available? And they had just had a cancellation of a show, which was August this year. And I just said at that point, come on, it's August. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it. And, and Joburg Theatre is largely run now by women. <laughs> and then they went for it. Uh, we ruled the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And are there any plans to maybe tour? Um, yes, it's very exciting. Uh, it's looking very likely. It's not absolutely definite yet. I'll wait till every signature's on the piece of paper uh, mm -hmm. and some of the money's in the bank. But we should be opening in Shanghai in July 2020. And we're looking at uh, a period of time in China, followed by a fairly long period of time in Australia, and then to tour through Europe. So it's very exciting because we're going to take this South African cast mm. and this South mm. African production and make these statements about female empowerment all over the world. How oh, exciting is that? That is so, <laughs> it's actually fantastic. I'm so, so proud of South Africa when I hear things like that, <laughs> especially because our, our musical um, industry is just crazy with its talents and with the people working within it. It is it's on another level and to be able to share that with the world is such a fantastic opportunity for us as South yeah, Africans. I'm the only non-South African on the team. Actually. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> well, yeah, I was born in Britain, but I mean, I've been here since 1993. Okay, you're South African. South African <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, I'm South you, African. You're South African. <laughs> and another thing I think that's also important is that 
besides from entertainment, the the show has you know a large educational um, side to it as well. Are you guys doing any n- initiatives for people who who possibly can't afford to see the show to come come through and have a what a look? Yes, we all felt, especially given this second opportunity, that we must use it, and of course the relevance of Women's Month. Uh, and, and so we put out a call to corporates. Uh, and to individuals, but basically to corporates, to say, uh, sponsor a ticket for 100 rand. So we mm. did, or we're doing five special performances, daytime performances, where youngsters can come. Uh, and we're saying to corporates, you please pay for the ticket and give it away to a mm. girl student. Um, if you know them, especially those that couldn't afford to come otherwise. Mm. And if you don't, we'll do it for you and we'll identify the right people. Mm. And in fact, I um, just the other day, yesterday, I left the theatre um, at lunchtime and it was packed with youngsters, some of whom I felt were far too young to see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they were just going mad with applause because they actually could identify, they could understand what mm. was going on. So it's been lovely to have that opportunity. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I remember my whole childhood, my mother would take me to see these theatre shows. And I think I was very privileged because when I was in high school, I asked many people about musical theatre and they had never been to a musical theatre show in their life and that's coming from a privileged background and a privileged school and I think it's just it's quite saddening that not many people get to experience such beautiful storytelling and in um, music and acting and it's so great to see that corporates are taking the time and taking the finance to try and support another person to do that especially the underprivileged girls out there for this specific show. Mm. And, and in this way, we're not having to say to them, you know, please put 4 million rand or 400,000 no. rand or even 40,000 rand on the table. Budgets are tight. I mm. remember days, you know, the good old days of theatre producing when you could go to the banks and the insurance companies and the big corporates and ask for a lot of money for their identification with the show. You really can't do that in this economy. So what we have said is, you know, even if you just want to buy five tickets, do it in your name. Let us know that you care and allow five people for 500 rand to come and experience this. And they have. They've taken it up. Taken mm. it up. It's so fantastic. Mm. Wow. And you actually brought up quite an interesting uh, point about, uh, you know, you were talking about the young girls. Is there an age restriction on the show? We advised that, that it may not be suitable for for under 13s okay and that was just an advice we certainly haven't put an age restriction well you know i started an age restriction of three years of age in mandela because i got fed up with crying babies in the middle of shows (laughs) quite honestly i don't think it's a place to bring a baby in in arms you know to the theater but no apart from that age restriction um we felt it was very strong and we felt that um youngsters may have a problem especially coming with their own parents and not knowing quite how to understand some of the emotions that are going on stage so this idea now of doing performances specifically for them when they come together and they're not with their parents Mm -hmm. we found they can release much much more easily Uh, and the buzz uh, in the interval of them comparing stories with each other Mm. and, and hopefully these are not yet tragic stories but what they're doing is they're discussing the meaning the conversation is starting yes yes and it's very important it's very very important i don't think it's spoken enough because a lot of the things discussed in the musical are taboo in our culture yes the whole world actually and i think if the more we talk about it the more awareness we can create and I think that's a beautiful thing. It's so great that you guys have created this opportunity for them. You know, there's a, I I'm, I'm, no, I'm taking up too much time, but I'm sure you'll edit me out. Um, <laughs> it's such fun talking to you. <laughs> but you know, you've seen the show. There's a moment in, in the show, in the first act, where two women kiss each other mm. on stage. Um, and not just two women, but two black women. Mm -hmm. And it's been fascinating for me, although I've been a long time in the society and I adore the society I live in, but I'm still learning all the time. And for me to see young men, usually I would guess between the age of 20 and 30, black men sitting in the audience who couldn't take that and they giggled and they laughed or they made comments to each other. 
because they couldn't believe they were seeing two black women kiss each other. By the end of a show, I can guarantee you, because I've had so much experience of it now, those same men are standing up cheering and screaming mm. and loving these ladies on stage because this show takes them beyond it. So mm, we give it yeah. to them for one moment, but there's a point of that kiss. And come the second act, they start appreciating it. And it's been fascinating to watch for change mm. in their own their own understanding of that so quickly in, 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 in a theatre show. I think people realise at the end of the day, once you see the whole story, that everybody is a human on that stage and everybody's portraying a human. And that's it. It's a human with their own life, with their own choices, their own actions. And you kind of appreciate that. You look at it and you go... You know, they, they've struggled so much through all of that. And for me to judge them, you, you actually can't. Yeah, there's no You see in self yourself and you, you, know, you almost um, are a bit ashamed that you judged them in the beginning. <laughs> and I'm sure that goes through their minds because, I mean, you do. You really feel for these characters on stage. But everyone in the audience is also a human being. Yes. And, and if, we, if we can, by putting on a show on the stage not just entertain them because i'm an entertainment merchant you know i don't want to do theater but doesn't entertain but if we can also give them that moment in their lives where maybe just maybe they will think about it later or talk to their girlfriends about it later or their guy friends and say how come we were not so shocked by that an hour later what happened on that stage mm. and and reflect on themselves by doing that mm. and then I think it's great if it can serve both purposes as a show I definitely yeah, think the exactly. color purple has created many conversations and it's fantastic yeah I, I feel like we could actually go on for hours over here. Yeah. I've had so many questions come into into my mind but unfortunately we <laughs> have run out of time so yeah thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. onto the show and chatting to us and we urge everybody to please go out and see the show even if you have seen it already um, there is the opportunity like you say to buy tickets and sponsor them to to young learners and those who who might not have the funds to go and see it so it's the color purple on at the Mandela Joburg Theatre until the 7th of September. Can I just say also while we're saying thank you, can I say thank you to Rada? Just very quickly, please. Rada Definitely. has been the most, not just the most relevant, but the most helpful and, and the most instructive partner to have on this show. We as a production team have learned a lot from working with Rada. And so to be able to even do this radio program with you is an absolute privilege. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Look who's wearing the pants. The Color Purple, the gloriously empowering musical that everyone's talking about. The media raved, the audiences stood and cheered. Now this multi-award winning show is back on stage at Joburg Theatre, but only until September 2nd, presented in association with 702. Tickets from 120 Rand at joburgtheatre.com. Everyone holds the power within to change their own life. Sometimes we need a little guidance. RADA is a non-profit company founded to empower people to help themselves. An acronym for rape, alcohol, drug and abuse. RADA has launched a new and exciting campaign. RADA Inspire. Designed to encourage ordinary citizens to make a difference. You don't have to be exceptional. All it takes is to do one small thing differently and by improving you raise your resonance. Creating a ripple effect of positive of change. We don't have to stand tall, but it is important that we stand up and take action. Become a RADA Angel. Visit www.rada.co.za or share your story with us using hashtag RADA Inspire. Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za